My name is Tara Marie, you can call me Tara, and Mary Makes is a knitting podcast where I talk about my current projects. I'm coming to you from Hamilton, Ontario, which is situated on the traditional unceded territories of the Erie, Neutral, Huron-Wanda, Haudenosaunee, and Mississaugas. Hi, hello, welcome. Uh, Look at this. It is a brand new springtime episode. Current. Wow. Love it. Um, As you can see, I am in a brand new apartment. I mentioned in my last video that I was having some mental health struggles and honestly it was reaching the point where it was beginning to affect my physical health as well. I went to a physiotherapist and it turns out I have both carpal tunnel syndrome and hypermobility in my hips and everything just kind of hurts all the time and I think the stress and the brain stuff really has not been helping. So I really just want to focus on my health for this year. So I've moved into an apartment not very far away from where I was um, just to sort of be able to rest and heal in my own space. So I've kind of been thinking of it as like a health retreat. <laughs> And I think it's been really, really good for me. I absolutely love this apartment. Um, I will probably give a little bit of a tour at some point, um, but for now, I'm just going to show you the uh, nice looking part of my apartment. I still have so many boxes to unpack. Not sure where I'm gonna put all the stuff, but we'll see. So yeah, everything's everything's going well, I think. Um, it's May as I record this, almost June. The sun is shining, the weather is getting warmer. Enough of that, let's talk about the knitting. I have one finished object to share with you today, and it is the one I am wearing. My first spring-summer knit for 2023 is the Velen by Camille Decouteau. I think is her name. This is a top-down uh, saddle shoulder t-shirt with a really beautiful uh, pico bind off on the sleeves and also the bottom hem. The yarn that I used is BC Garn's Bio Balance in I think it is the color natural. It's color number one. It is 55% pure organic wool and 45% pure organic cotton. And I had three skeins of it, and this is what I have left. I did go up one size uh, larger than what I would normally knit for a couple of reasons. One, my gauge was about a stitch and a half or a stitch and a quarter uh, tighter than the pattern's gauge. And the other reason is that I was super inspired by one of the projects that I saw on Ravelry. Someone else had knit theirs to be um, pretty cropped and with shorter sleeves and it just seemed like it was a little bit more, like a little bit wider and boxier. And I just, I've been obsessed with that particular project for a really long time and I wanted to make mine as similar to that as I could. So went up one size and I think that was a mistake. I think that this pattern in particular, um, it has rather wide sort of front shoulder portions to begin with. And this is the smallest part of my body. So for me to go up a size when this part of the garment is already kind of wide, I think, I think it was a bad idea. I think I have a lot of sort of unnecessary bulk here. And I think that it has really affected the look of the shoulders. Um, another thing that I think has affected the fit of this is the fact that I used a 45% cotton fiber content in my yarn. And the original was designed using a merino silk blend. Already that's going to be so much more drapey than my chosen yarn. I thought that mine would work out really well to have it be a little bit more boxy and structured, but with the way that the shoulders are built in this pattern, I think it just doesn't work. So I don't really love how the shoulders look. Not only is there a lot of extra fabric up here, um, but also, I don't know, just... 
I look like a mushroom. <laughs> they're just, they're a little bit stiff and the, the curve that they've got, it kind of feels like I'm a football player, maybe. I think what I might do though is I think I might get the shoulders pretty wet, wear the garment and then go outside on like a pretty warm day. And maybe that will help sort of uh, fit the garment to the shape of my body. I'm hoping anyway. My experiences with garment knitting have definitely taught me that blocking is absolutely not the final step in achieving the garment's shape. I think my best example is with my Ila sweater, the Ila by Orlan Souche. When I first blocked it, the, um, the edges of the neckline, particularly on the two sides, they were like very pinched and they actually like, they stood up straight uh, on my body for a while. But after wearing it a number of times, it's really smoothed out. Um, it doesn't stick up straight anymore. It just sort of fits me, I think, the way that it's supposed to. So I'm not giving up on this garment. I do really love it. I have to say like knitting this was such a joy. It only took me 12 days, which is really good for me, but it was just a very engaging pattern. Um, the beginning of it is maybe a bit unconventional. You start knitting just this strip, this tiny little strip of yarn to build out the uh, back neck. And then you sort of pick up stitches and, and do various things from there to form the shape of the neck and the shoulders. It's really, really interesting. And also the pattern is written very, very clearly. And, you know, while you're doing all this, you're also having to maintain the stitch pattern throughout. This stitch pattern uses um, four different like four rounds to achieve the pattern so I would just keep a tally and just go like one two three four five six seven eight so despite the yarn maybe not being the best for this project I really really loved working with it I think it's my first time really working with a wool and cotton blend and I feel like that's just such an interesting and useful combination of fibers because working with 100% cotton, I don't love it. Cotton is very bulky. It's very heavy. A lot of people have issues with it because it can really hurt their hands. And even though we use cotton a lot for like spring and summer garments because it is rather breathable, it's really bad for sweating. <laughs> Cotton is really bad about absorbing moisture. So I think if you put some wool into that blend, wool is moisture wicking, it can really help with things like sweating. I would really love to use this yarn for a full on sweater. I think that would be really nice for like spring, fall, or even like summer evenings. Really great for people who tend to overheat in the winter. I think it would be really good for. It's really, really soft. It was super easy to work with. Didn't hurt my hands at all. The only thing that was interesting about it is, um, let me see if I can show you. It just rips. <laughs> you do need to give it um, a bit of a tug, but yeah, when I first did that accidentally, it was like, oh, oh okay. So yeah, I would love to use the yarn for a sweater, a different sort of project. And honestly, I can easily see myself making this again, just in a different fiber. I would love to go down a size, um, keep it with the sort of boxy cropped version with shorter sleeves, but just different fiber content. See if I can find something a little bit more drapey. But despite the fit issues, I still really, really love this. I really wanted to go for that sort of like 90s feminine grunge sort of look where you've got like a floral maxi skirt, but then your top is like very sweet, neutral, I don't know, just like a cute little t-shirt or cute little cardigan. I think it works. I love it. I'm very, very happy with it. It was a great project. Next up, I have a work in progress that is still very, very early on, and it will be going on the back burner for a little while, um, but I can talk about it just a little bit with you today. 
In, I think, my first or second episode of the podcast, I was talking about a sweater that I was making. It was the Adamantine by Erica Smith. Um, I still have most of it here uh, in pieces, but it's like this beautiful, lovely forest green cabled sweater. And I just, I love how it looks. But I know, I, I know I'm not going to finish this. I don't really do seamed garments. I was considering seaming this using a machine, but I'm just, I'm not really happy with it. I know I won't wear it. I really don't want a seamed sleeve. Whatever, I'm not going to rant about this project any longer, but I've decided what I'm going to do with this yarn instead. So there's not really a whole lot to show, but... I am making my very first drop shoulder garment. I have been terrified of drop shoulder garments for a really long time, which is kind of funny because I feel like a lot of people start with drop shoulder garments, but I feel like I don't quite know what I'm going to get with a sweater shaped in this way. What I don't like is that you have to knit the entire body basically before you get to the sleeves. I mean, I know I could just knit to the armholes, stop there, and then work on the sleeve. Um, but what gives me so much anxiety is that I see a lot of variation in how those sleeves look. Um, something about the way that sort of the three pieces of fabric come together it often bothers me. It doesn't always look as neat as I would prefer. And sometimes maybe because of uh, row gauge, there's like some like puckering that can come out where your sleeve begins. I don't know. There are just all these things where like, I don't know how it's going to look. And even though I am happy to frog anything and everything, I've just been really resistant to beginning that process when I don't feel confident that I will be happy enough with my sleeve. But I've decided I'm going to give it a go because I really want to knit the Home Sweater V-neck by Kadri. So that's what I'm doing. So I've repurposed that yarn that I was using from my Adamantine sweater and it is uh, Malabrigo, no, it's not Malabrigo, Madeline Tosh, Tosh Vintage in the color Moreland. It's just so lovely. I love this green so much. I've decided to pair it with this uh, Isair Silk Mohair. So the colors aren't actually super close. Um, as you can see, the mohair is a lot more of a bluey green than a yellowy green. But once they're knit up, I think they look really lovely together. So the Madeline Tosh is unfortunately a superwash yarn. So I don't know how wise it is to knit myself this like big, heavy, bulky V-neck sweater. I don't know if that V is just going to keep getting longer and lower. But my hope is always that adding a bit of mohair will um, maintain the structure of a superwash sweater. I have already hit a pretty significant hiccup. So if you're not familiar with one way to build out a drop shoulder sweater, you begin knitting a panel of stockinette for the back and then you pick up the shoulder stitches and begin to knit down. Once you get to the armholes, you connect and uh, complete the rest of the body. So I finished my back panel and then for this side, um, I have my stitch marker here. So here's where I would begin to pick up my stitches and then work towards that edge there. And that worked out great. But then on this side, I wasn't able to start from a place um, in the middle. I had to start from the outer edge. And I am really bad at doing things like that. I added an extra stitch accidentally. Like I started too far over when I began picking up my stitches. When it comes to stockinette edges without any kind of border, I just, I, 
I'm bad at it. They they don't they don't look good. I have a hard time determining where to begin. It's just always a little bit of a disaster for me. So I think if I leave it, it is going to contribute to that feeling I have where the way that my stitches are picked up from the armhole, it's just not it's not going to be good enough. So even though I've already knit so much of this sort of front panel, I will be uh, going back, moving over one stitch and um, beginning again. But I would rather do the work now. I would rather pull out all this mohair now than have to deal with the disappointment uh, much later. So this was just something that I sort of quickly cast on and was working on while I waited for a couple other projects to pick up. Now those projects are ready. So I'll be working on this again later, um, but for now it's nice to just have it sort of begun and ready for me. And actually speaking of works in progress that are on the back burner, I have made absolutely zero progress on my Avero sweater and I have also made zero progress on my Copenhagen cardigan. Even though it was way back in February that I filmed that last episode talking about those projects, I just have not wanted to work on them even a little bit. So I figure I will just keep those as they are for now. And I know that the Copenhagen cardigan, I'm going to absolutely 100% finish it. The Avero, I'm not so sure about, which is really upsetting because all I have left is like half a sleeve, but I think I didn't actually make that one large enough. I think it just doesn't fit the way that I want it to. I think I want it to be a lot bigger, so I think I'm going to have to go up one or two sizes, or I may just decide to use that yarn for something else and knit the Avero in a different yarn. That's also a possibility. I feel like people so often comment on my maybe somewhat extreme willingness to frog things, but I just don't really see the point in finishing if it's not something that I'm actually going to wear. My closet is sorely lacking in hand-knit spring-summer garments. Now that I've completed my velen, I have exactly two. So when Hobie in Denmark announced their on holiday with Hobie knit along, I decided to sign up. So the theme of the knit along is basically vacation. Uh, an interesting story that you've got. You could knit something that you've previously forgotten to take with you. Maybe you were inspired by a culture that you were surrounded by on a trip, something like that. Just anything to do with going on holiday, going on vacation. So sadly, I'm not much of a vacation person, not because I don't want to be, I just haven't really had a whole lot of opportunity for that in my life. Usually when I go on a trip, it's to somewhere like Montreal. I love Montreal. I love that city so much. Every time I go there, it just feels so good. I kind of feel like I belong in a way. And I did go there last year. Usually when I go, um, it's usually like April, May. So that is what I have decided to use as inspiration for this knit along. Not, you know, tropical weather, but sort of Canadian springtime getting into summer. I've decided to knit two different projects for this knit along. I'm probably not going to finish them both uh, by the time it finishes, but I can at least get started and um, I'm pretty excited by these two projects. So the first project is something that I am improvising. It is this cute little t-shirt. Uh, it's almost done and it's in this lovely yellow color. So this yarn is Hobie's Rainbow Bamboo. So it is 60% uh, bamboo viscose and 40% cotton. And I am definitely on the hunt for my favorite summer yarn. So any opportunity I can get to try a new plant fiber yarn, I am really excited about that. So this yarn is really pretty. It has just like a tiny little bit of a sheen to it, um, but it's not what you would see in something like a mercerized cotton. And it also has like a little bit of a not a halo, but like, you know, there's a little bit of fuzz around the edges, if you can see that. Um, definitely feels like a, a sturdy yarn. It's got some weight to it. I don't know what 
bamboo is like in a yarn. This is my first time working with a bamboo yarn, um, but cotton is usually like kind of dense, but it feels really good. And I think because of that, I decided to, I knit a number of swatches for this yarn and I sort of went up in size as big as I could go without it turning into like a mesh. So I've just used a four millimeter needle and I think it, it looks like it's um, pretty airy, but still remaining decent. <laughs> wow, that color just really disappears when I hold it up to the camera. So I've employed my favorite construction techniques for this. I have a bit of a saddle shoulder there and some uh, contiguous sleeves, which is just my absolute favorite. There is a little bit of raglan shaping um, towards the bottom of the sleeve. And I think this project is going well. It's not 100% what I wanted. And this is actually like my third time knitting it. I have had to do a lot of experimenting because I'm just not really happy with the shape of the neck. It looks like just a regular old scoop neck, but what I really wanted for this project was for it to be a square neck. And I think when you're knitting top down, a square neck can be a little tricky. It can be hard to get those crisp corners um, that I so desperately want. I feel like it would be a lot easier if I went bottom up but I really don't want to go bottom up. I did sort of look to see how it would look with some edging around the neck. Uh, and honestly, it looked worse because not only am I struggling with how to shape out a somewhat structured square neckline, I'm also having to deal with these front stitches. Something about when a neckline is formed, like it's never... I I don't know how to describe it. I'm just not happy with it. I feel like the best way to wear it at this point is to not put any edging around the neck at all and just allow these front pieces to um, curl in on themselves because it makes a straighter line. So it's a little disappointing, but I feel like there are just some things that I don't, I'm not quite aware of yet. There, there are things I need to learn here for this to be ideal, but I'm going to keep going, I'm going to finish it, I'm going to wear it, and I'm just going to see if that offers me any insight. And I just, I want to enjoy it and I want to experience the yarn and see how it holds up, how it washes, all of that before I put in any more brain power into figuring out how I can make this like my, my dream square neck t-shirt. So it's a couple days later and I just wanted to show you a little bit more about what I mean in terms of the issues with this project. So I do have what should be a square neckline, um, but because of how the uh, knitting sort of connects when you cast on a whole bunch of new stitches, there's just a big curve here rather than a straight line. And maybe there is some way to sort of reinforce that, but I'm not really sure. I'm kind of just feeling like I should leave it the way that it is because also um, I was talking a little bit about the shape of the neckline here. I'll try to show you, but it looks better when it's just, um, when I allow the stockinette to roll in on itself because if I pick up stitches all the way around to knit a neckline, it really sort of unfolds all of this. And I don't know, the shape that it creates is just not very nice. Uh, it's not very straight, I suppose. It doesn't just go straight down um, the way that I want it to. So yeah, it's a little bit tricky, but I, I think I'm just gonna leave it as a scoop neck and I've also completed one of the sleeves as you can see I just did a one round of knitting while I picked up the stitches and then six rounds of one by one the second project I'm working on for the on holiday with Hobie knit along it's definitely an experimentation for me 
I picked out some yarns and I've been very excited about them. And then they arrived and I panicked just a little bit. Um, so I ordered this one, lovely bubblegum pink. And I ordered this one, which is sort of a orangey red. The color is called saffron. It looks super, super red and kind of like very, very saturated on camera. And then I ordered um, this one. And uh, yeah, she's a lot. She's a lot. Oh. So I looked at these three yarns and I was kind of like, what have I gotten myself into? I want to have so much more fun with my knitting. Like I want the utilitarian garments. I want the practical garments. I want things that I can wear to work. I want things that I can wear out with my friends. I want all that, but I also just want to have a lot of fun. I want to go a little crazy with my garments. I want to figure out colors. I am so bad at choosing colors, which I think is why I usually stick to single color garments because it's just a lot of pressure to have to figure out what goes with what, especially when buying online, you don't always know 100% what you're going to get, which is why this was a little bit unexpected. It just wasn't quite what I imagined. I think there's just a lot more like neon in there than I thought, but honestly, it that's just really silly of me because looking at the photos again online, yeah, like that's, this is just what the yarn looks like. And I think this yarn is cool as shit, to be honest. Like, I love this. I love it. I'm just really intimidated by it. And I think part of what I am intimidated by is the project that I chose and how these three are going to go together. So I've knit up a swatch. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> I mean, I think it works. I was really nervous because they're all just so different, but I think it works. So the garment that I want to make using these three yarns is Lydia Morrow's Rumble Raglan. I love the Rumble Raglan. I just think it looks so cool. It looks so fun. I just, I need that in my wardrobe. I was very inspired by Lydia's sample in the pattern. I wanted to find what I could that was sort of similar using Hobie's yarns. I have used this yarn before. It is the unicorn sock yarn that they have. So it comes in a bunch of solid colors and these are superwash, I believe. And then they also have a line of hand dyed colors, which are not super wash. So the colors that I chose are very different from Lydia's, but I think what was most important to me was to have like a fun sort of reddish color and then something with uh, some rather bright colors. And then the pink that I have is sort of taking place of the more neutrally beige-ish color um, that Lydia has in hers. When I knit the very top here with just the red and the pink, I got really nervous. It felt like it was heading into circus territory. Um, but once you add the rest, I think it looks really, really good. Uh, it's not a very good swatch, but I just wanted to see how these colors would go together. And I'm really, really happy. I'm really excited. I'm a little bit afraid of knitting the Rumble Raglan. I've never made something like that before, and I've never done a full color work garment and it's definitely going to be a big challenge but I just think it would be so fun to be able to wear this garment oh it's so exciting so that is all I have to show you so far for that project um hopefully I will actually officially cast on soon I'm going to try to finish my um rainbow bamboo t-shirt the yellow one as quickly as I can so that I can get started on this and I do rather need to hurry up because I have another knit along 
You may have heard that Claudia from UNIT has published a book with Lina Publishing. It is Making Memories. It is this absolutely gorgeous book of knits for children. And to go along with the release of the book, Claudia and the team are holding a knit along for the... I'm not going to attempt the Spanish. The Cathedral Pullover. In the book, there is the children's version. So freaking cute. But they also have an adult version available um, from their website or through Ravelry. And they very kindly asked if I wanted to participate in the knit along. So earlier this month, I went to Toronto and I went to UNIT where they had a book launch party. It was just a lovely time. It was really fun to go around and talk to all these other knitters. Look at all the beautiful yarn. And of course, Claudia had a lot of the samples from the Making Memories book um, all throughout the store. And it was really neat to feel all the yarns and check out all the patterns. And I'm definitely at that age where a lot of my friends and family members are beginning to have little ones. So it's nice that I now have like this whole book full of really beautiful children's patterns to go through. I'm like, these little models, they're so cute. Here's another shot of the cathedral. It's such a cute sweater. The recommended yarn for the adult version of the Cathedral is Knitting for Olive Heavy Merino, but I really wanted to add some mohair to mine. The sweater has a lot of twisted rib detail, and it's sort of funny. I used to be obsessed with twisted rib. I wanted absolutely nothing to do with any other kind of ribbing, and now I, I don't use twisted rib ever. I can't remember the last time I used it in a project. So I think to get myself back into the twisted rib appreciation, I kind of just want to soften those lines a little with some mohair. Maybe that's silly, but it makes sense in my head. So unit let me pick out some yarn from the shop. And so now I'm going to be making yet another foresty green sweater. <laughs> so these are the two yarns that I picked out. So the main yarn is La Mana Como, which is, I think it's one, yeah, 100% merino wool. And then for the mohair, I am using La Mana Premia. And this one is 60% mohair and 40% silk. So there is a pretty substantial silk, silk content in here. And this is the color 34, which is called Pine. And these colors are pretty different. Um, the mohair is definitely a lot lighter. And here is the swatch that I've got. So it definitely turns it into a little bit more of like a grassy green, but I really love how it looks. And I don't know if it's because there is some extra silk in this blend, um, but it's one of those mohairs where you can like really see that silk thread in there. And I think that sort of helps to lighten the look of the fabric as well. With some mohairs I find, silk mohairs, the silk really just sort of blends into the main yarn and you don't really see it all that much. Um, but this one's pretty prominent and I think it's really pretty. It almost creates like a bit of a marled effect with those silk strands. So I'm really excited. I wish I'd incorporated some twisted rib into my swatch so that I could see what that looked like. But the knit along starts on June 9th, so there's definitely some time to pick up some yarn if you would like. I know that UNIT is selling a number of different uh, sweater kits. If you would like them to put that together for you, you can absolutely have a look. If you want to knit your own adult version of this sweater, UNIT is offering my viewers a free copy of the pattern until Friday, June 9th on Ravelry. Just use the code provided on the screen and in the description below. Yeah, I'm just, I'm so excited to cast this on. This yarn feels so beautiful. At the book launch event, I was actually talking to one of Claudia's sample knitters. So she knits some of the sweaters that you see on the models for units patterns. 
And she's worked with these yarns before. And she, when she saw that I had them, she commented, she was like, oh, those are so nice to work with. So I'm super, super excited. I've really been wanting for so long another green sweater in my wardrobe. And now I have two of them on the go. Other than the projects that I've shown you today, I've basically been living in Swatch City. I can't tell you how many swatches I've knit in the last couple months, just like trying to trying to get a project to like really jump out at me, you know? And I think that's what I really love about knit alongs. It gives me a lot of direction. It gets me through those periods where I know that I want to make something, but I'm just not sure what I want to make. So very grateful to be working on these projects right now. I'm happy that I have my home sweater v-neck waiting for me as soon as these are done. And I also really want to make some time for another spring garment. I know that I'm working on a couple of them right now, but I had some really good plans I think last year and I still have some knitting for olive cotton merino. I'm really excited to work with that. And beyond the knitting, I'm really just trying to focus on my health, focus on unpacking. I have also been going out a fair bit, which has been really, really nice. I'm typically pretty much a homebody, but I think it's just been good for me to leave. <laughs> While I was in Toronto for Unit's book launch, I also got to see my lovely friend Robin for a few hours. I also went to go see Sunsetter play live. That's my friend Drew. He made the music in my intro and outro for this podcast. He's put together a full band. So I went to go see them. They were playing somewhere locally and it was such a good time. Really cool to see a couple of my friends that I haven't seen in a while. I have some more concerts planned as well. But I can, I can already feel my knitting energy coming back. I can feel all of my energy coming back, to be honest. So I hope to have some more finished objects to share with you very soon. I'm probably going to cast on something else pretty shortly. So I know this has been a bit of a short one, um, but I hope you'll come back for the next one and see how my progress is coming along on the various projects I've shown you today. I also want to say a big thank you to everyone who left really lovely comments on my last video. It was so nice that some of you were thinking of me. Honestly, I was thinking of a lot of you too. I'm really beginning to know a lot of your names and it's just been really nice. It made me feel really good that I wasn't completely forgotten while I was gone. And one last shout out to the people in my life who are not even knitters but they watch all of these videos. Like what better compliment is there? Of course, my boyfriend Merrick, my friend Robin, my friend Bradley, my little brother Scout, who is 23 years old. He's definitely not a knitter. He must have notifications turned on because as soon as I post, he sends me a message. I'm pretty sure I have a few more friends and family members that watch. So if you are one of those people, thank you for watching. I know that you have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about, but it means a lot to me that you would actually spend some of your time uh, watching these things that I create. It's, it's really fun for me. Yeah, it means a lot. <laughs> Anyway, I will let you all go. Um, happy knitting. Hope you're having a great time and I'll see you next time. Bye.